since the dawn of FPL, managers have been fighting over form and fixtures. Team form have been looking down on their enemy's inability to predict when players were going to suddenly score double-digit hauls. And team fixtures have been smugly planning their strategies and transfers months in advance. There's also managers that are sitting on the fence, but they're really boring. We're not going to talk about them today. My name is FPL Dave. With me for the battle of the ages is my co-host, Rich. How's it going, buddy? Hi there, Dave. Yeah, good, good. You look really red, pink. Yes, yes, yes. I I was playing golf. Thank (laughs) you very much. You don't need to mention it. Now, I know what you're thinking. We are going to be answering that question. But why are you burnt? No. <laughs> I was playing golf. <laughs> and I should have put more sunscreen on. No, no. We're going to be answering the question once and for all. What is better? Fixtures or form? Now, I know what you're thinking, Rich. And audience members. And the anxious voices in my head. How can we possibly answer this? Let me just show you. Rich, just keep staying there looking pretty, buddy. I will. I will. I'm excited for this. Can you give me a wink? I'm really bad at winking. <laughs> I put you on the spot. I shouldn't have. Totally, totally dig it. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, that put me off. That wink was so weird. <laughs> so the goal is myself and Rich will each start in game week one with the exact same team, okay? We'll both agree on the team beforehand and try and make it as template to start so that it's as balanced as we can make it. Rich, you're gonna be team fixtures and I'm gonna be team form. Is that right? You wanted to be team fixtures, didn't you? Yeah, I wanna be fixtures. I, th- I mean, personally, I think fixtures is is the way to go. Yeah, fair play. That's fine. We're gonna stick you oh, on fixtures, win, mate. win this, so. Yeah, because <laughs> you wanna win already. We haven't <laughs> started yet. And our objective is to outscore the other using only transfers for either in-form players or players with decent fixtures. All right. So what do you think right. so far? Yeah, sounds sounds pretty straightforward. Except yeah. For, for team fixtures, yeah. <laughs> He's already confident, guys. So this is going to be a series that we're going to be doing every week on the channel. So if you can, please subscribe. If you already have, then awesome. That's really, really nice of you. That is not the subscription thing. I'm going to have to take that again. <laughs> I pressed the wrong one. <laughs> subscription button. And uh, hopefully this is something that at least gets a little bit of uh, interest because it's going to be really, really fun. Um, We're going to go through the rules of engagement. We're going to be building the team today as well. And we also asked Twitter to send us some template teams to get us started. So uh, let's look at your rules to begin with, all right? Um, It's pretty straightforward though, fixtures, because obviously, you know, it's fixtures. You don't really need to define fixtures. We all know what fixtures are. Um, so let's just jump in. Let's look at your rules. Okay, so only players from top six teams. So using the um, Fantasy Football Hub fixture ticker, uh, you can only transfer players from the top six teams using a six game week range. You can't transfer a player out until those six fixtures are up though. So you got to keep them once you get them and see out that fixture lineup. So we'll be tracking which game week you're bringing players in. Um, If you have players who are not within the top six teams anymore, uh, you must transfer them out, right? So if you have more than one, the player with the worst fixture runs who you have to prioritize transferring out. Just to make this a lot easier though, goalkeepers are exempt. Um, and oh wow! So so if if Liverpool have the worst run of form and yeah. I have Salah in my team, yeah. I have to remove Salah even if it's yeah. for like Snodgrass or Andros Townsend or yeah. Well, you've obviously you've got the the best six teams in the fixture uh, ticker, right? If Liverpool are no longer there, then you need to transfer Salah out for someone who is in the top six teams of the fixture ticker. So if you transfer oh, wow. them out in okay. game week nine, then whoever has the best fixtures between game week nine and 15, because we're doing six game week range. Um, yeah. I'm so already it's... thinking of some pretty good tactics. Like, like, <laughs> geez, yeah, I we'll mean... go through them. We'll go yeah. through them in the end. But I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited for this, by the way. I've been yeah. I've been telling everyone about this as a teaser and, and you keep making fun of me, right? Because you're like, oh, you're cool. very confident, but it's going to be great. Um, the last 
rule before we move on um, is when selecting your team, you must pick the players with the best fixtures for your starting 11. So you can't leave a player on the bench because, um, I don't know, he's he's been in really poor form, for example. Um, you still need to play him because he's playing a really rubbish team, right? Um, okay. But again, just like goalkeepers, fodder uh, players are also not included. So if you get like a four million nobody, then you don't need to play them just because they're playing Norwich or whatever, right? So if sense? I have like if I have Billy Gilmore, for example, yeah. and Norwich have really good fixtures, I have to play Billy Gilmore. No, you don't have to play, and that's what I'm saying. Fuck, because oh. he's a fodder player, right? So he's not included, because that would just make this sure. game or this competition really hard. Okay. So that's if what Billy's a fodder, you don't have to deal with him that's with your point 11. Of view. <laughs> um, and you don't need to transfer him out either, right? So he's just fodder. Okay. Um, however, if we start with a bench player, because we're going to build the team up uh, today on this video, um, and we st say we have like, I don't know, Sar as our first bencher or something mental, then he is included and he's not a fodder player. So if his fixtures go bad, you'll have to transfer him out. Okay. And uh, on the screen just now is the fixture ticker. If you're not familiar, you can go and sign up to the membership of uh, Fantasy Football Hub. They have got uh, the description in this video will have our link and you can get uh, monies off and it's great. And I've been using it for the past three days and it is crazy good how it's pretty much like cheating FPL. And I'll never not use that analogy because it's so easy to use. Um, Such an endorsement there that you've been using it for the last three days. I've, I mean, just I've been using it for the last few seasons since. <laughs> since, since oh no! Since well, I, yeah, no, I've been using it for ages. <laughs> I just mean like I've been like really been going using hard. Using this nearly, nearly ten minutes now, and I, it's. I, I just, <laughs> please don't pull our sponsorship. All right. Um, <laughs> on the screen is the fixture ticker. Um, game week two to game week seven. I didn't include game week one because we're going to have the same team in game week one so it doesn't make sense but as you can see um the top six are brighton wolves leeds west ham and man united crystal palace so say for example you have a southampton player or a chelsea player or an arsenal player they have horrible fixtures you have to transfer them out for one of a brighton wolves leeds west ham man united or crystal palace player does that make sense makes sense makes sense do you have any questions so far my only question would be, if I want to roll a transfer, I can roll a transfer. You can roll a transfer if all your players are in their good fixture period. So you basically are signing players for six weeks at a time. If all your players are within those six weeks, um, then you can bank your transfer. But if there's a player in your team that has a bad fixture, like say, for example, if we start with a Man City player, and then in game week two, we know that they have a really poor fixture run based on the ticker. You have to transfer that Man City player out. You can't okay, just save so your transfer. I, so the loophole I thought I'd found, I haven't found because what, you, you've covered that. Because what I was thinking is, using the Salah example again, if, if they were bottom of the fixture ticker, I would just not do a transfer that week, even if I had two free transfers. Uh, yeah, no, but that's the, why are you trying to cheat the game off? Really? <laughs> I want to win. Like this is, like, I'm always looking for little loopholes and stuff. And, you know, fair play. No, but I think that but you've thought of all the loopholes. Well, I might not have. See, th this isn't foolproof, and it we'll get to how unfoolproof it is when we come to form because form is really hard to um, define, really. So we're gonna have to agree on a subset of rules okay. for that, and we'll get to that. But um, yeah, so you. The objective is for you is to have a team full of really good fixture players and so that you can kind of gauge how long you've got each of them for so that you could potentially, like I know I have him for six weeks so that means by game week seven I have to transfer him out so I'm going to make sure I only really need to do one, there is a seagull like going off in the background I really hope that no one can hear that, I'm going to close my window. Um, you Phil, I believe in you. We could just get the, the seagull to fill. I think that, that would be a lot better. So the goal for you would be to try and um, segregate your transfers far enough in advance so that you don't have to use two at a time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that, this is going to take more thinking than I thought then, actually. Um, but mm. that's that's good. That's good. I think we should also clarify these, these aren't our actual teams, are they? These are... Um, no, family member I'm, teams, for sure. I'm using my... Um, best friends team yeah fam family member i'm helping him out 
That's how you wink, mate. That's how you do it. Family okay, members. mate. <laughs> yeah. heat, heat, heat. I don't know what it's called. Heat stroke? Does that cause you to wink? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out because I am yeah. dying. So let's move on to the form uh, rules because this is a bit more difficult to define. Um, so using the opted data on uh, Fantasy Football Hub, I can only transfer in one of the top 15 in-form players for each position. So I've split them up, defender, midfielder, attacker. Um, that's, a, I, that's a lot of players considering... Nah, mate. How many players think, have you got how many, the top how many six good teams? There's not even 15 good strikers. Yeah, you're right. All right, you let's change that to 10. We'll change that to 10. Any striker. All right, we'll change it to 10. There we go. We're negotiating. There we go. Well, uh, to be to be fair, like we both need to be okay with this. It's really difficult to to do for him. But rule number yeah. one is I've got a, a certain amount of, of players I can look to. I can't just look at all of them. Um, the next one is I can't transfer out a player who's still in form. And we'll get to how we calculate that in a minute. Uh, but obviously a player can be in form and not score. So we're going to need to have a certain amount of game week period that we can use to see if their good form is temporar temporarily dipping or if they need replacing. And I was thinking like three game weeks, which is mm. half of the amount of time that you have to keep a player in as well. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, so I've got to transfer out any players who are no longer in form. And if I have two players who are no longer in form than the player I've had for the longer time will have to be prioritized. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. So it if does. I've had a if I've had Salah for ages and he's been super in form and then all of a sudden he goes bad and I've had Bruno in for for the same or sorry for like I don't know two weeks less, um, but he goes bad at the same time, then Salah has to go. I think yeah, I think it all sounds fair apart from the the number of players and I th I think maybe we'll have to talk about that in the future because. I was just thinking goalkeepers as well. If you have like 10, top 10, maybe it could be per position. Well, don't worry about that because goalkeepers oh. are exempt again. I think for okay. the sake of balance, we'll just go with a set and forget keeper, both of okay. us. And then and then that kind of covers keepers. We don't have to deal with it because we get the exact same amount of points for them. Got ya. Sounds yeah. Sounds uh, When selecting my team, I have to pick the most informed players regardless of fixtures to start. So it's pretty much the exact opposite of yours. Um, I can't just bench um, Salah because he's playing City. I need to play him. I know you wouldn't anyway, but you get my point. Like I can't bench <laughs> players because they're playing against hard teams or or teams that you know bogey teams or whatever. I just need to play all of my best informed players. Um, and again, fodder players aren't included, so we don't have to play Billy Gilmore even if he scored two goals in the past two games. I might, I might want to. <laughs> but, yeah, if he hits form. Yeah, but I don't have to. Um, and on your screen just now is the Opta data. So we've got, this is for strikers I've put in, and obviously it's based on last season, I think, um, for the last six game weeks. But to calculate form, it's going to be a bit difficult. So each position has different stats we're going to be looking out for. Ultimately, it's up to me to decide what player to choose from the stats we have. But Rich, you're going to have to agree that they are in form just to keep me right. Like if I say I'm going to bring in madison and you say you know what he hasn't actually returned he's just got really good stats so i'm not letting you do that he's not technically in form yet so we're gonna have to have conversations yeah about it. i mean i guess my first thought on form would be literally players who are scoring assisting and keeping clean sheets regardless of if the stats are good or bad yeah but uh, then to but... calculate if they're still in form, if they're still doing it, even if they don't have a goal in the last two games, but they yeah. scored three goals before that. Do you know what I mean? So it's a bit more nuanced. So to keep it fair, maybe we could we we could also get people involved in in the comments and in the chat, maybe. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, just the, and just the gem, general vibe. You know, sometimes you know if people are angry at Jesse Lingard, he's probably gone out of form again. <laughs> right. Yeah, if everyone's really annoyed about Jesse Lingard missing shots and everyone has them and he's got high percentage ownership then yeah it's time to ship him out um yeah. but some of the stats that we're going to be looking at for uh, the attackers is things like shots in the box big chances xg xa successful dribbles and touches in the box and that's on top of like obviously goals scored uh, midfielders is big chances uh, big chances created xg xa key passes touches in the box crosses and stuff so because players can be in form and doing really well for their team but they might not be 
converting those good stats into goals. So it's going to be a bit nuanced, but at the same time... Yeah, because I, th- I think it will work. And I mean, even stuff like price drops and price rises, you could factor a little bit of that in. Yeah, and 100%. Yeah, we- yeah, we'll agree on stuff, probably. And it's really Maybe easy to do as well. It's going to be... It's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting me to have to like argue my case uh, lawyer yourself. style um <laughs> but you can see on your screen how easy it is to use the opta thing you literally just go into edit you change all the stuff to what stats you want and it comes up with uh a list of players that kind of meet those those uh stats that you've picked so it's really easy oh yeah. and defenders xa crosses successful dribbles xga as well shots conceded those type of things um but yeah, form's a bit more of a feeling than anything else. So it's difficult to pin down what makes form. So regression to the means, obviously, I think. Sample size, sustainability of output. Is it luck or is it form? So these stats are going to help us do that. Um, I think they will. And it, I mean? it's just one of these things. You just get a feeling for it. You know, yeah. as the game weeks go on, you get a feeling who's in form, who's out of form. Yeah, and 100%. Because a lot of that might come down to just the FPL points. Yeah. Right. Oh, I mean, that's to be fair, that's like the main thing. But also FPL, the actual website fpl has the ict index as well which we can use so there is a few different things um but by and large it's going to just be a, a culmination of loads of different information um including eye tests and stuff and because we're all football fantasy managers and we all watch this game we played this game for ages we're all gonna know whether i'm taking the piss <laughs> with players or if we're like no no dave you have to get this player it's ridiculous that you don't have them as a most informed <laughs> person. Do you know what I mean? But throwing in eye test can make it strange because, I mean, if, for example, Basuma is, you know, playing well, like the football purists love him. Yeah. W- would you then get him in even if he's not got any goals and assists? Cause... Well, I don't have to get him. So that's where the top no. unless, thing unless I, comes from. Unless I put up a huge stink, big argument. Yeah. You're getting mean, Basuma in for It'd be weird that you argue for my <laughs> team. But yeah, we can technically get the Suma. (laughs) But he has to also bring points. Like, I want this. No, true. It's more of an experiment than anything else. Like, I know I did that big spiel at the start, but really, I just want to know. Like, obviously, it's going to be a little bit of both. But how far should we be leaning towards each? Is it 50 50? Is it 60 40? Should we really be paying attention to form? All that good stuff. We're going to be able to come out with at least a few answers to it. I'm not the most scientific person. You're not the most scientific person. Um, I'm assuming based on the limited chat we've had. Yeah, I was say, mate. I've got a full-on, like, breaking bad setup in the other... Actually, no, I don't. Yeah? Are you Brian Cranston? I mean, I can, I can I be Brian Cranston. I wish. That's why I shaved my head. Um, you look And you look gorgeous, baby. Um, but maybe mate. we can bring in some fun guests who can actually go through this stuff in a bit more of a scientific way just to see what they think of it and, and how we're doing it and keep us right. But also you guys in the comments, if you are there and you have like, he has to get this player or they have to look at this or here's an amazing tool that I use to predict form, all that stuff, like please let us know because this is not an exact science. This is not something that we are both amazing at. We just thought it was a really good idea. So we want to do it for you guys. Things to note, I've got some stuff to point out. Um, to make things slightly more balanced, we're going to be using set and forget keeper and uh, fodder as well, just to so that we're not messing about and trying to fix our benches or whatever. Like we're just going to keep them the same. Um, we're not going to be using any chips or wild cards, which is important mm. because obviously that makes it a little bit more fair. Would you agree? Yeah. No. I. I oh, I can't, part of me would love to just use the triple captain though. I guess we could use the triple captain. Like if someone's really, oh, it does it does bring a lot more variance into it. So oh. that's something that we need to talk about as well. The captaincy. Um, we're going to be utilizing player price points so we can try and keep a balanced team. And transfers are slightly easier to do. If you're transferring Kane out, then it's probably a good idea to transfer in someone of equal point or equal price. So that mm. you're not sitting with a bank balance of like six million, and then you move it all to defense, and then that means that when the best player comes back uh, as being a striker, that's the most in form or whatever, then you know to be moving yeah, it back or whatever. I don't know if you covered this. What what's the rules on hits then? So can we do as many um, hits as we want? You can do as many hits as you want. Basically, you can okay. do as many as you want to set your team up, um, but you don't have to do it. It's not like if I if I get to the point where 
there's three players on my team that are not in form. We'll call those my fires. They're not in form anymore. I don't need to transfer them all out right away. I need to transfer out the one who's been in my team the longest right away. Okay, makes sense. And for yeah. you, it'd be the one who has the worst of the three fixtures. Just with chips, yeah. I almost think maybe we should use free hit as well. I'll tell you why. Because if it's anything like last season, you could get... like This experiment could be going very well, and then an, at some point there could be some horrific blanks and doubles that just destroy one of us. I'm going to say maybe. Maybe we could have, like, if it's an emergency, maybe people could vote on it, we could vote on it. Yeah, you know? on Twitter, we'll have, like, a wee vote yeah. thing. We can say, like, do you think we should use our free hit for our form versus fixture team or whatever? We're just going to say no. Yeah, I know. It's, they're going to they're gonna yeah. want the most misery. So yeah. I'm excited because <laughs> no, I don't want to use chips anyway. I think chips are rubbish to begin yeah. with. No fair. Um, All right. All so right. if there are no players with bad fixtures or forms in your team then you have to bank the transfer. You can't just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to bring this guy in anyway. Because then that breaks your rule of having the players that you brought in for six game weeks at, at the least. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But so yeah. you can have players for longer if they're, if their good fixtures last longer. It's just the minimum amount of time that you can transfer in a player for is six game weeks. Um, it's going to be volatile at the start because obviously the, the hub ticker will be updated regularly as we yeah. find out more stuff about teams. So you could think you've got a player or I could think I've got a player for six game weeks, but then the fixtures, the fixture difficulty inevitably changes. Yep. Yep. Um, and I mean, to be fair, you have a big advantage at the start because you have all the fixtures. Whereas for me, I'm probably not going to be able to make a transfer as a, as the, as team form um, for at least, I don't know two maybe three game weeks or something i'd argue i mean let's say pookie scores hat trick game week one he's in form i yeah, think it's, that, I think it's that, that quick i think it's that quick in i mean the, the amount of the amount of range of 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 uh i guess data that we can use which would suggest that we had we, we'd need to wait a little bit longer and have the, mm. a bigger sample size but at the same time like we'll i'll argue that i have to bring pookie in if that happens do you know what i mean like that's good yeah. for me um so yeah have you got any uh any thoughts you think you definitely think you're winning then no it sounds sounds good um, sounds good i'm gonna win it so no <laughs> it, to be honest you, you've done it quite well um so i think you're I, gonna I, win I, I'm, well, I'm not to be feeling <laughs> i'm a little bit less confident than i was before i you know i fully understood the rules yeah um but it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun and let's, let's just do it so what we do now we're picking the, picking an actual team yes All right, so this is, we tweeted out saying, we're recording something tonight, need a favor. We need to see some drafts, the more template, the better. And to be honest, guys, I was really disappointed by uh, the lack of people tweeting <laughs> us in because like I was expecting, you know, maybe 50 people and we didn't get that many, to be honest. I'm actually going to go fast. This is ridiculous. You guys sent in so many teams. I didn't think we'd get a reply. <laughs> oh no, stop loading. That's so funny. <laughs> so we have an actual like load of teams to go have you through. gone through each and every one and added them all up nah i didn't did oh. you you that was your job oh, i was i was working what was i doing i was getting burnt is what playing i was playing golf getting burnt, yeah. <laughs> which by the way wasn't <laughs> worth it because i played rubbish my hands sore and my face every time i laugh hurts <laughs> right, i'll try not to be too funny then mate um won't be a problem for you <gasps> <laughs> i set you up for that didn't I? <laughs> um all right, so what we're going to do then with all the people, and thank you very much for sending all your all your templates in because we're going to need them. We're going to go through them and we're just going to find... I'll just go right back up at the top. There's literally like 300. Um, and we're just going to... Giraffe, eh? Yeah, we're just going to pick some teams uh, based on the most, uh, the most picked players, basically. Yeah, okay with that? Yeah, sounds good. I mean, obviously this could change before before game week one as well. But yeah, it'd be interesting to, to go through. Yeah, one hundred. And this will be the team we both have. Yes. So it has right, to so be let's begin. Where do you want to where do you want to start them? Well, let's pick our goalkeeper. Okay. So this is gonna be a goalkeeper where we're both gonna have that same uh, keeper for the whole season. Yeah. Unless we want to use a transfer on a keeper. Yeah, but you don't have to. I guess you can Thing if is, you want. We probably wanna the problem is you probably want a keeper that's definitely, definitely going to play. Yep. Actually, um, you know what? I've changed my mind. You're not allowed to use a transfer on the keeper. 
the whole point in us having the okay. same keeper is so that the keeper one, doesn't one matter. One issue could be you might go for a keeper, then you go for his backup as well, which yeah. sounds fair. But then you've only got one slot for the. So if you have two Brighton keepers, you can only have one Brighton outfield player. So you have to That's think true. about that as well. Well, we don't have to do that then. I guess we could just we could just have a set and forget. Or we could keeper. just pick a really like Pope. Actually, I don't want to offend people. We could we pick could just like put a Pope in, and he'll play every game. We'd be using quite a bit of budget. Oh, for goodness sake. Six and a half hours later. We've spent too long on goalies. Let's get on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. All right. So um, shout out some of the most template ones that you have, that you know Trent of already. Alexander. For defenders, Trent. Yeah, Trent for sure. 100%. I might as well just go to team selected by. Shaw's yeah. in there as well, probably. Um, yeah, search, search by popularity. So these are the top five team right now. By. Oh, no, Dean in there. That's quite expensive. So quite expensive. So I reckon we have four of them. Let's remove Dean as he's the fifth one. And let's do Lamptey maybe. Sling in, yeah, sling in Lamptey. Lamptey's pretty, pretty big on the. Uh... Scrolling through the drafts, people are sending in as well. So midfielders, yeah. are, there's, there's a clear template for midfielders. We have actually. I've just clicked on one randomly, and we have yeah, the I was exact say same. Salah, like... Bruno, Rafinha, and I'm just Brownhill. Looking at, I'm looking Those at people's. Dean, Alex, there, lit, yeah, this is the I template. Mean, Those five that we picked are pretty much. Four, there's four. Oh, it's you're good. looking at defenders still. Yeah, I was just double checking to see. Yeah, Shaw, I guess we don't have to worry. Like, Shaw's apparently got um, a rib injury, but it doesn't well, matter. Does ailing it? as well. If we need the money, we can go ailing. Okay. Um, where are we? Here. Midfielders now. So what is, is what are people easy. saying? Salah, so Salah and Bruno, Bruno is basically in everyone's team at, at the moment. Okay. And the budget choice seems to be Brownhill. Brownhill. Yeah. Why is that? Because uh, he's I mean, got he a funny a name. Today. He scored a brace today because obviously we're recording 20th of, 20th of July. He's just got more attacking threat than than your old your old Scottish mate. Oh, yeah. Billy. Well, we don't yeah. know yet. We haven't oh, seen Billy. him play for Norwich yet. We don't that's know if true. he's going to be box to box. <laughs> that's true. He might be up front. He, yeah. He's not going to be up front. No, um, so, no. yeah, those three. And Rafinha seems to be very, very popular. Looking okay. at all the template drafts we've been sent in, Rafinha yeah. is you know, right up there. Um, so let's leave the other midfielder spot free for now and see. See what we can do. Okay. See what Much kind money. of money we've got left. I gotcha. Tony seems to be the standout in all the drafts. Yeah. Everyone seems to have Tony. Are you starting with Tony in your actual draft, by the way? At the moment. But I've not been tinkering that much. It's too early. It's too <laughs> early. See if Grealish stays. I think I'm just going to change him to Watkins and just like have fun with Watkins and Antonio. I'm, I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. It's funny you mentioned Watkins, because Watkins is, seems to be in a lot of teams as well. It seems to be Tony, Watkins, Calvert-Lewin. Kane is fourth highest. Yeah, I've got Kane, obviously. We could chuck Kane in. I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> Sneeze, Dave. I'll, I'll cover for you. Oh, there we go. That was hardcore sore from the burning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but don't play golf, guys. It really hurts. Um, Calvert Lewin's so there. Bamford as well. Ian Acho. Watkins is in a lot of these drafts. Scrolling through him. Yeah. He's thirty three point three percent owned. Yeah. Um, I think how much money we got left? So there's thirteen point five. If we put Cavani in, we'd have five million left. Yeah, I've not seen any of those teams with Cavani though. So no, it's just Man United tax. It's going Inacho, through Bamford. people's teams again. That's a... Calvert Lewin. Yeah, Calvert Lewin is in quite a few actually. Two thousand years later. Yeah. I'm cool with Sar. Okay, so now what we need to do? We've got our team. Is there no money in the bank? There's zero money in the bank. But what I'm thinking now is we just have a quick scan of this from our. Um, different perspectives, me being form, which I'm happy mm -hmm. with, uh, most of these players. You with fixtures. Let's have a look to see, you know, what kind of fixtures we're looking for. So let's have a look at Man United on that one that I showed you guys earlier. Where is it? Um, so Man United are fine. So you wouldn't have to transfer him out. Um, Brighton, Lamptey's fine. You've got no Wolves players. We've got Leeds, so Rafina's fine. West Ham. We don't have any West Ham. Oh, no. 
Yeah, no, we don't have any West Ham. No, we don't actually. Um, that's why Suchet could have been the alternative. But well, that, that's a good point. Like Everton, where are Ever- Everton in the uh, thing? They don't have good fixtures after game week two. Uh, so Calvert Lewin. Pickford. Although we don't have to worry about moving out Pickford. Actually, we've got triple Everton, haven't we? Oh yeah, Pickford. But you don't have to deal with that. But yeah, no, Dean and Calvert Lewin. So you could potentially move Calvert Lewin on for Antonio. Yeah. Um. Brentford's got terrible fixtures. Uh, Aston Villa don't have good fixtures either. Um, Liverpool are not good either. And Man United are fine for Bruno. Do we have any Brighton? Where's Watford? Oh, we do. We have Lamptey. We picked yeah, Lamptey, we didn't we? That's good. We could, we could be covered some Brighton defence. Watford, the, Watford the aren't. But here, this this is the thing, right? So Watford you're not going to have to deal with the the player that you have in your team that has the worst fixtures is Fafana. Okay. I could li- deal with that. So that's the first that. transfer you're going to have to and deal with. And I wouldn't with. have to worry about till till game week two. Like you, like you put the graphic out as and well. And you know what's going to be interesting for you as well is that you have Fafana to deal with, right? But then when it comes to game week three, because you don't have to take hits if you don't want to, Mm-hmm. You know, the, these players might it might change so that you're gonna have to look at the the actually let's do that. I'm just gonna do that. I think that would be really interesting. Um, is you're gonna have to look at the the ticker again, and you're gonna have to see what the ticker's saying for game weeks three to eight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of so it's gonna be different. And, so and things are, things are gonna change. So really, the, what what you're gonna pictures. be doing? Can you see that? Hold How on. do we deal with injuries as well? Did you did you cover that? No, we didn't okay. cover captains either. This can be for our, for our next because I think we're going to have to revisit this anyway um, nearer yeah. the time. Let us know you what know, you guys cap- think we should do with captains because we could just like you can captain whoever you want, or we could do it that you have to captain. Um... So one way would be you have to captain whoever's got the best fixture that week, or whoever's down as the best form. That week, and but that's then where that it kind of falls give you down. A, that could give you a massive advantage. Yeah, because you're captain in Fofana or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> game week one. Yeah, I think we need some help there. You would actually be captain <laughs> in Lamptey game good. week one, if we did it that way. Yeah. And I would be, be captain fun. in whoever I want because we don't have any form, so it would be Salah. <laughs> well, it's all a good idea, and I guess we're just gonna have to iron a few things out. You know, get a few suggestions in the comments. Yeah, hundred percent. What was the other there. one? Luckily, you luckily, we got a few weeks to go. Um, so I asked about captains and something else. So I'm having a look. Injuries. 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 Oh yeah. So um, with injuries, I think we'll just you're allowed to take hits, but you don't have to play them, obviously. So yeah, you need to. We 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 might need to deal with. Of course, the bench. you can just remove them. And maybe Who would our bench be? Easy. Oh no, our bench is going to be absolutely fine. Me. We actually might have too many players. What, as in not enough, not enough fodder? I mean, uh, we can talk about that later when we do our it final might, thing. It might make it more interesting because obviously we could still downgrade players to fodder. Yeah, we've got 13 so, players and two of them. Ah, no, you're not allowed to make fodder. That surely is, would be cheating, right? Because then that means that you have, you would only have 12 players you need to deal with, whereas I would have 13. And it throws the balance it's off. It's part, part of the strategy, though, really, isn't it? And I mean... Yeah, that's yeah, true. A 4.0 defender could emerge. We don't know who it is at the moment. So I guess in, if in game week two... Wouldn't that be breaking rules? Big... Okay, well, this would be it then. Because that would break a rule. You only you have to bring in a player who has good fixtures. So I guess if, you're, if your player is fodder, they would need to be part of the good fixtures thing. Um, technically, you would have to play them as well because they'd have the best fixtures... But maybe not because fodder is exempt. I think we're just. I think um, some of these things we'll have to, like a gentleman's agreement. Like as in, yeah. It, logically, we're going to be able to work Ooh, out if you this should an, or shouldn't do it. This is an interesting one. I didn't even think of that. Can you transfer fodder? My my immediate reaction is to say no, so it eliminates the possibility of of like tampering with the balance. But at the but same then time, you could also upgrade fodder to good players. Like yeah. I think mm. there's going to be a lot of strategy from both mm-hmm. sides. I mean, obviously, I'm thinking a bit more from a fixture point of view. I actually thought that I was going to be starting this with a disadvantage because you can plan fixtures already, whereas I have no form. But to be fair, based on the balance of our team right now, you have to do transfers right away. 
Like after yeah. game week one, you've got people you need to, you're not going to have Fofana for a long time. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to get rid yeah. of him in game week two. Unless, unless enough changes on the hub ticker after one week. After one week. <laughs> it, I mean, it could happen because I, I think, you know, it some could. teams could, you could think are good become bad and vice versa. Right. I've, I've got up in front of me the game week three to game week eight range. So this would be who you would be transferring out um for fun no it wouldn't be for fun it would be the next person whoever it was i think it was lester mm. um no no wait that's that is lester who would it be who would it be i think maybe everton so this would be wolves leeds brighton man united west ham newcastle but you have a slur of other uh teams that now is the worst so like actually in game week three it wouldn't be um the Everton players would be Brentford. So you would have to get rid of Tony because he is the worst player. <sighs> and then and then we go up another one and uh, your Aston Villa players have to go. They are they have the worst fixtures between game week four and nine. Maybe picking fixtures was the wrong wrong idea, but I think I'm going to need a little bit of time to properly plan this. And yeah. maybe by the time we do our next video, I'll have a, I'll have a better idea. That's going to be so good. I'm so excited. Yeah. I was so uh, excited. Honestly, Dave, is it, you actually did have a good idea. So <sighs> you were excited. I'm so excited. I think I have the better, <laughs> to be fair, looking at that right now, where every single time a new week happens, you might have to transfer a different player than what you were thinking of. Because it doesn't really matter what players have to be transferred out. It's only the worst player that needs to be transferred out. Because next week, the worst player, the second worst player of the first week, is not going to be the same player who has the worst fixtures in maybe, the next maybe game. Maybe the week. threshold's too harsh. Maybe it should be, you know, you know, the very like the four bottom teams. But I think I'm going to need a little bit time to time to look into it. Obviously, people want to make comments and their suggestions. You Ooh. know, if if some rules are too harsh, you mean like you don't fair. have to you don't have to transfer a player unless they're in the bottom six of the fixture run. Yeah, or or bottom four. I'd like. All right, all right. And you're already starting to weasel your way out of some. Well, I just think, <laughs> let's start with this. Yeah. And if it becomes apparent by September that that you're failing miserably, yeah. Yeah. All right. But let's see how it plays out. Let's see how it plays out. Even right. with a handicap, I can still do this. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> Even with a handicap, you've already made like. Three, three. I'm gonna cheat this ways that have came to nothing, and then we've also got a. Uh, if if in September I'm losing really bad, we need to relook at it. <laughs> yeah, but in, I didn't know when I wrote them who uh, was gonna be who. Right? You only told me yesterday that you wanted to be fixtures. So there that, you go. That's a lie. It was definitely over a week ago. I'll find the, I will find the message. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you everyone for watching this far. Let us know what you think about the team and the captaincy rules. And if we've missed any really, really good in form or fixture uh, ideas or tools, let us know. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Up the pod. Up the fixtures. <laughs>